I'm going to demonstrate the simple form and then we start working on it. For instance, well, if I would type a name like Batman, email blank, and my comment would be, hey, great, right? And then I would try to submit it. It's detected that an email is missing. Now, two, two things happen at the same time. The user input in the name field is actually preserved as uh, a um, well as a courtesy to the user, right? This is also caught by a PHP routine, but it also says please enter your mail because the PHP script detected oh there was not an email submitted, and then it's able to put out a very specific user feedback message here. So. I need to submit an email like at bat xx, a comment, a p rocks, right? And then I be able to send it. And also as a courtesy, the user will receive a feedback stating, thank you, your contact information has been sent. You submitted the following, and there we have the uh, rendered output from our post array, right? Name Batman, email Robin, and comments, hey, PHP rocks. So let me see if I were receiving it. So just to, to uh, give you an overview that it really works. No, that was not the window. This was the window. So here inside my mail account, uh, I have a mail specially created for this. And there is my self-processing PHP script. Be sending the uh, form information right away. Name Batman, email Robin, hey, PHP rocks. Very, very complex PHP routine and I'll be happy to you step by step through the process. You're going to learn a lot of new methods and you are really now going to work with yeah, what I would already call now programming and complex programming. Good, I shut down my browser and uh, then I return to Dreamweaver. This um, is built on basically three different um, parts we need to create. First of all, we have our main page, a PHP HTML5, <laughs> HTML5 based <clears throat> page template, which is holding the input form. Then we make a mail process script in an external PHP file included by require once. And then we have the mail routine to be set up. And then we have also to implement a thank you page where the user is going to be redirected to. We will not be able to create the whole um, array of files today in the e-learning sessions, but at least the um, input file and then we start working on the mail process script. And tomorrow we have ordinary lessons from 12.30 to 15. There we will going, there will we um, <clears throat> finish the script. Um, by the way, if you would like to check yourself if the finished script, including the PHP mail routine, is going to work, you need to have a real online account to test it with <clears throat> because our local XAMP or MAMP server does not, um, well, it does ship with a mail server, but the mail server is not configured. And that is actually a pretty complicated task to set up a local mail server, which then will process the mails from your computer. Um, this demands some firewall tuning and port tuning and all those kind of things. And I really want to avoid it. Once um, you have um, a, an account on beplaced.net, for example, you can test it there. So um, 
If you haven't got an account on beplaced.net, I give you the web address again here in my browser, then establish an account. It's free. Now beplaced.net. Right, there you can get an absolutely free and without ads account. Um, this uh, is probably also interesting if we are really going to on test our uh, to online test our databases. Uh, I can recommend it also for exams project. I never had any problems with be placed. It's great, um, well actually great free account host. So and you get two gigabyte disk space for free with a mail server integrated and with PHP. Um, and MySQL and more included. So um, I would recommend that you check your account if you have got one or you make a new account on beplaced.net in order to test your mail script tomorrow. Good, but now back to Dreamweaver and let's start working guys. Good. Well, first of all, same procedure as every day, almost. We're creating a PHP HTML5 based page template. For a new PHP doc type, HTML5 doc type declaration. Title would be a self-processing and then please um, leave it inside your forms folder well, I'm already inside my forms folder here And I call this form underscore check dot PHP. Here we go. First step would be to um, set up the the contact form. the well the wizard for instance form <coughs> sorry the form action here is as we already know referring to the page and the scripts. I'm going to insert a PHP echo here and looking for the global array server. And then it will rely on a script page as well. PO PHP underscore self in a single quoted string and concluded by the cornered brackets. The form name is contact. Oh, I type contact here, make this with all case letters. So I change to post. This is now crucial uh, here not to use get. I told you uh, at the uh, beginning of the lessons today that get will reveal all submitted informations in the browser URL. Later on, by changing this to to get, for instance, if you will see how this looks like in a browser. So 
but this is kind of uh, sensitive information like uh, to submit so I would always choose post here for not disclosing the submitted information directly so then we need our well-known input type text first one first one input type for the name and name it name of the fields are very crucial for uh, the scripts later on so I suggest you stick to my uh, naming convention here so input type text called name then and basically just copy and paste this three times because we need three input type text fields the next one would be email just make the word email then in one word name email and the last one would actually be um, anyway not an input type text it would be a text area so uh, we would like to reserve uh, more space for comments so there we could use a text area tab and name would be comments yeah I think need also to be um, concluded not sure about this in HTML5 well I do it anyway right so we have two input type text fields and one text area fields I'm going to add labels now for the various fields label for uh, for name sorry would be the first one would be name and then I use copy and paste action here to label the other fields label for yeah, would be the second one email uh, the label for comments would be good well this would like this um, if you would like to format it a bit more in order to make sure that it's aligned a bit more um, put in each label and input type in a paragraph tag HTML next object For the email part here insert HTML text object paragraph the last one object paragraph right um, below the form I'm going to insert one more paragraph this is to make the user aware of that some fields are required required so using the paragraph tag you can see that it's um, formatted in a more convenient way now um, make the user aware of that some fields are required I'm going to add an asterisk to name and to email and then I pick up the asterisk here in required fields that's a thing which you uh, often see actually on the web 
the um, HTML entity, the special character for the asterisk is ampersand hashtag 42 semicolon. So I add this right here to name. Percent. Hashtag 42 semicolon. So this should This is not taking, oh, there's a dollar sign, sorry. I meant the ampersand, oh, like this, right? So this will add an asterisk to name. And then I will copy the ampersand also to email because I actually make those both fields later on required. And then I um, take this up below here. Right. So now the user would know um, name and email are required fields to submit. And I'm adding a nice headline as well. Contact us. was the footwork, working with HTML, how relaxing, right? But now comes the PHP part. For insert a script, the top of our page a PHP code block there. And then, uh, well, let's do this step by step. First of all, I will set a variable here. Constructing, says my comment, constructing a just a uh, very, very good uh, chat message. Aren't we missing a button, Louisa? We are. You are absolutely right. Um, absolutely. So you, um, you need a, uh, uh, a paragraph more. Oh, very keen on e-learning. That's good. A pleasure. A paragraph tag we need to add to our script containing an input type submit. Input type submit. Um, the name And the value of this button, that means the label for the button, contact us, whoever this is. But contact us. Whoever we are, please contact us as soon as possible. Yes. So. Now we have implemented the contact button. Thanks. Good. That means I can return back to code view. So on top of my PHP script, then again, I'm going to construct an array for it yet blank fields. This is important for our um, form check later on. So set a variable called missing in action, or just missing. To be an array. Um, 
the missing array will be populated as soon as the mail process uh, routine is called. Just for now, you just need to know this is an array which will hold values from the post array. To check the post array, execute it on the button send. Well, basically like the solution um, Andrea provided for the last assignment. Setting an if condition. Constructing, constructing the general syntax here. An if condition. Now the condition would be is set open oh not the corner ordinary parenthesis here that would be s post i particularly are referring here to the Now that means if the user pushes the send button and if as post so consequently exists. Then, and this is important, mail underscore process dot php which we will construct a bit later on. We'll initialize now two arrays. The first array called expected. This is going to be array. What this does I'm going to explain in a second. And then we will initialize one more array, not called expected, but required also as an array. You tell from the name that this will hold all the information I expect from the form and this array will hold all the um, values which are required. We know already that the post array contains the form field names as its keys, right? So that means anything typed in in the would has would have the name key, then email and um, lastly, comments. Be, um, very, very precise. Expected, right? Expected are all three fields and nothing more. A key called name. Expect a key called email. Expect a key called comments. That is everything which should arrive from the form and nothing more. Um, this is not only important for the mail process later on so that the mail process knows which information to process, but this is actually also an essential security routine. Probably you heard um, about the term SQL injection. Well, um, John has named it in one of the previous lessons. SQL injections is a, a severe security, security threat to PHP sites connecting to an SQL database. Well, this script does not do the trick, but it's still vulnerable. SQL injections, in theory, um, are the possibility to submit inside a form, for instance, additional information, especially if this is done with the get method, right? Then you can smuggle in, for instance, uh, yeah, executable functions, right? But 
if the mail process script does exactly know what is supposed to arrive, that means a key with the value name, a key with the value email, and a key with the value comments, then it is much more um, difficult to smuggle in additional information. Your mom is going to visit you? Well, uh, she can learn some PHP as well, hmm? right? So just place her in front of the screens and uh, I can start asking her what the difference between a global and a local variable is. And at least you can show your mom that you actually are studying. So when you do e-learning, all get your parents in. Good. <laughs> Required. Well, this array is now for internal use. Here I'm going to specify which key, which keys I regard as required for my form. There has to be a, a, a match, right? So uh, a required key has also necessary to be in the ex expected array. So, and we decided in our form to make name, fields. So Luisa had a uh, question. Could it be name, email, and array? What 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 you are constructing here using and we learned this um, this term hash rocket, right? Then you would assign actually something to the array. But um, this here is just checking an array and uh, its values. We know already what's inside. It answers uh, that that answers your question, right? So in, in the next step. Um, well, we could um, try to see what's actually arriving from the post uh, array. And uh, well, let us render this out very nicely as an echo using a for each loop, right? just for demonstration purposes. So if the array post arrives via the send button, I can uh, perform a for each loop. And there I'm going to use the hash rocket, actually, Louise. I'm going to um, define my incoming array. That is the incoming array, the one I'm going to trace here. And then I would like to have the keys as values. So that means I'm going to fish for the keys here. And then we are signing the hash rocket, mm -hmm. like this term still. And then the loop runs. And then inside um, this for each loop, we are just echoing. Right. And in order to uh, achieve nice uh, output, we are going to concatenate this the simple line breaker. Oh, I can't test this actually in the live view. I need to test this in a browser directly. Going to home, then I type in some name. Frankie. Yeah. Dot com. And I always did it my way. And then uh, pushing the contact button, if you don't make any coding mistakes, 
should now echoing out the complete post array. All right, so according to our script, each key retrieved and rendered, which is actually true, right? So we submitted the name here as Frankie, we submitted the email here as Frankie at Sinatra.com, then the comment, I always did it my way, and this one refers lastly to the send button contact us, the name of the button. So everything works fine. I don't need the for loop, um, the for each loop anymore. So, but I'm keeping it anyway. Probably I need it later on. So I'm just going to outcome it. Okay. The arrays expected and required are not uh, are not uh, uh, taking any consequences right now. This is then done by an external mail underscore process dot. PHP. Um, embed here, because this is uh, a kind of very crucial routine for this script, I would choose a require method. Could also uh, think require once, but require is fine. We require an external PHP script file called mail score process, process, and concluded by a semicolon. Now that we said that we stated require this mail set, mail process PHP, our uh, form wouldn't work at all. Right, if I press the contact button because it's failed to open the required resource on the server. So this is more or less expected. That tells you also um, in the next step we need to um, create this mail process.php, which is then just a. So that means we need a new file, which is PHP and any HTML because it anyway. And then, moreover, we are going to save this to make the target path is not too complex. I'm just forming it, I'm just storing it beside our form check PHP. And I'm calling this mail PHP. This is going to be the heart of our um, mail processing. It's here where we're going to set up all the necessary routines to check the form, to take consequences, to format um, the uh, user feedback, and in the last step also to process um, all information via the mail server of the web server. code block is necessary of course to work with the script and um, well what we do here actually is to first of all we need to identify the um, post array the incoming post array and loop through it so basically we are performing the same thing as we did in the form check PHP, right? Remember the for each loop here? I'm just copying it out of my form check PHP. And then I'm going to include it, but I'm not going to echo any values here. No. So this is the base routine of my mail processing script. So it is required by the form check, so it will pick up the array and then running through the keys and then also um, looking for the values attached to all the keys. 
Now, the first routine would be what exactly is arriving? So first I'm typing the line and then I'm going to explain you what the line actually does. First of all, I'm initializing a new variable called temp because this is just a temporary variable for use in this script. So telling name. Then I'm including the following routine. First, I'm asking, is the value arriving here from the form, right? The value of each key. Is it an array? Is it an array? Um, well, for my script, strictly, I do not need to do so because I know that um, it will never be an array, right? I have just two plain input uh, text fields and I have a, uh, a text area. So no way this could be an array. I'm including this because this is standard form checking routine within PHP. Um, and it makes, it enables you also to use the scripts in other context. Now, um, the reason why you would first check, is it an array arriving here, is that in the form, there could be other kind of input uh, fields included, like for instance, a, uh, um, a um, what's called a radio button thing, right? Or uh, a drop down list with choices. And those are normally rendered as an array. So it would strictly be not necessary for our form, but for other forms, it might apply. Array. And then here I'm using the good old ternary operator to include now two consequences, right? Remember the ternary operator? Ternary operator is kind of um, setting a condition and then giving the possibility to do something if it's true or if it's false in the same expression, right? Ternary uh, operator demands a question mark here. And then I'm going to see if um, is an array. First condition would be true. If an array is arriving, we know no array is arriving, but anyway, if an array from a different form, kind of form would be arrive, then keep it as it is. Then the colon indicates the alternative, right? If it's not an array which is arriving, and that is important for us here. If it's not an array, then do not only keep the value, but trim it. Trimming is a built-in PHP function, which erases all leading and concluding blank space from a string. Right? So in case that, uh, uh, that there is blank space submitted, this will trim the um, script to its very, um, the string to its very core. And this is also a good possibility to avoid SQL injections later on, because uh, everything which does not belong to a string is literally crimped. It's cut away. Temporary variable plus ternary operator. Trim is, yeah, trimming. Leading and tailing white space or blank space from a value. So that means we are just dealing with the string or with the arriving value itself. So that means like here we are, are preparing our values, right? And it's inside and for each loop. So whatever we type inside here, it's, it's happening to all values and keys arriving.
So the next step would be to check driving empty, for instance, the comments fields, or is it in the at the same time in the required array? And we can take some consequences, right? Now the arrays come already into play. The required array from our form check. So we would like to check now in a second step if variable temp is empty. So and we can use also built-in function here if empty. And if it's in this at the same time in the array required, we can use in array method to do so. But it's typed in a special syntax here, right? So in array demands what are we going to check first? What's what is supposed to be in the array and in which array then? Obviously, the key here, check, is it in the array required? So let me, let me explain this. Okay, well, I'm getting an incoming question from Andrea. I don't understand this. Andrea, this is good that you don't understand for a uh, while. Hmm? Good. So <laughs> your, your question is, we are checking if it is an array. If not, then trimming it. Yes, basically. So you did understand. Anyway, we are checking, is the incoming value an array? This would be the case if we would add a kind of a radio uh, radio button, a radio button check to our original form, right? So uh, there are form elements which can submit their values as arrays. In our form, it's not the case. So it's just to give you an overview over um, standard form processing. So first we are, we are checking, is the value an array? If yes, keep it like it is. Just keep the whole array. If not, then trim it. That means if the value is an ordinary string or a numeric input or whatever we expect, then trim it. Delete all white space, leading and tailing white space. It's just preparing the string, the, the, the string. Special value can just preparing the input string. Just a routine um, to um, eliminate unnecessary white space and also a security measure. Clear? No. It would be um, not leading white space what you just submitted, right? So um, this is leading and tailing. That means if there would any anything before or after a name, then it would be trimmed not the blank space inside a string, only leading and tailing white space. Good. So um, back to our um, back to our if condition, right? So we check is the variable empty, right? So could be that for instance the name field wasn't filled out, right? Then it would detect that the value now stored in the variable temp, you can see this is already getting a bit complicated, is empty. But now when it's at the same time also in the array required, and the syntax is like that, if you call in array, then you would check first the key to check, and the key well, is getting in here, right? So it would be, for instance, let us say email, right? Is the key email in the required array? T. 
Well, then we can do some measures here. So I need to attend a question from Louise. So if A, B, X only, B will be stored. If you refer to A, B, C as the key values, then uh, as the keys, then X would be stored without leading blank space or white space, right? But um, if the whole would be a string, then also A and C would be inside. I'll be doing this practically later on. But just let me conclude here my if condition, uh, then uh, that we uh, get rid of the syntax errors. So basically, um, we are storing then the key in the missing array. We had initialized a missing array here. We can use it now. You have to remember that the mail process PHP is included in the form check PHP as a required file. So what we can do is uh, we can call the array missing here. The push syntax, the corner brackets, not missing, missing. Yes, thanks, Louisa. And then we are going to store the key inside. And in the key, yes. Thanks, Louisa. I saw it. Super duper. Good teamwork here. What's happening here is that well basically if empty, right? The name of the key added to the missing array, not to the missing array, to the missing array. Right, I hope you understand. Um, this is now populating the array with the elements which are missing. It needs to be in the required array and it needs to be empty in order to, in order to, to trigger um, this if condition here, right? So now we're trimming the value and uh, then we are kind of um, pushing already something into the missing array. Well, we can test it in our browser. Is there anything in the missing array uh, well, what is happening if I add white space to my fields? Um, first of all, I'm going to include the for each loop again so that I can see what the array um, actually contains. Um, and then Um, well, would it be after or uh, before? No, I can require mail process after the mail process. PHP is embedded. I can uh, call a var dump on the missing array. Good. So let's try this in a browser now. So let's say uh, the following case, I'm going to submit a name. 
Batman, but I leave the email blank. I leave the email blank in order to trigger the missing array. And then a comment, oh, I miss Robin. So much. So, and then I'm adding blank space here to Batman. For instance, or blank space here. And then I'm trying to uh, call the contact us routine. That tells us now two things. N is trimmed now, right? You can see that the blank space was eliminated. That you can see, but it's also happened to, oh, I miss Robin so much. And then the third one, our send button, we can ignore it. Then, this is the result of the var dump I performed on the um, missing array, right? You remember, I didn't fill out my email here. And this is now caught by my missing array, right? So the key is stored. Now my script knows the email is missing here, right? It would not happen to comments because it's not in the required array. So since I don't want to um, perform this each time I'm calling the script, I'm adding the var dump is also unnecessary at the point. So, save this and I'm returning to the mail process script. So, we leave it as it is. This would be the if condition if the variable, if the value arriving would be empty and if it's in the required array. Now we are doing something very special. What is going to happen if the key is in the array expected? That would be the next case, right? So, we are adding an else if in array. So, if we are retrieving here from the for each loop, right? If the key is in the array expected, then do something different. And something very special, which you don't know about, but which is very, very essential in now complex PHP uh, programming. Um, if you were getting confused already by um, variables and by arrays, well, never mind, because from now on, we are also working with variable variables. Yeah, this sounds amazing, right? So, please meet a variable variable. A variable variable <laughs> is like the name tells you, initiated actually by the double dollar sign. This initiates a variable variable. And then type the following, variable variable key is temp. Oof. Anyone can explain this to me right now?
50 kroners. <laughs> now I'm getting a smiley. Okay, wow. This is actually a, uh, a small line of code, but it's pretty complicated. So first of all, you need to understand the concept of variable variables. Well, I can, I can tell you in short, um, variable variable creates a variable with the same name as the former variable's value. Repeat that, please, <laughs> says Louise. Good, yes. Again, our sign creates a variable variable with the same name as the variable's value. Got it? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I can remember when I had my first PHP lessons, I was also uh, getting mad at this with the variable variables. <laughs> Morton is uh, typing a variable variable creates a what? A variable variable, um, Morton, it will be, uh, it is a variable. A variable variable creates a variable, basically. So you are setting a new variable. And it really means, so it will be like S key, like S -S key, okay. No, not exactly. Variable's name will be as value. Yeah, you are on the right way now. Okay, I'm going to um, to explain this uh, in in praxis, right? Um, let us say so. Just a presumption. We have right. So the ordinary variable key, right? So this is just a demonstration here how this works. It's arriving and it has the value name, right? Could be, um, this could be information from um, our array, right? So we have a key with the value name. So let us say key is name. We also know that if it was correct, if, if it was correctly submitted, then is an array that means name has a value, right? So you could specify this uh, further down. Name, name would be, for instance, Batman, like I did before, right? So, if I call now a variable variable key, a new variable from name, same time, That means variable variable key, right? Would in fact like this. You can also have the same result, of course, with larger amount of code. But since this is an operation which in programs, in programming quite often is done, you, 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 uh, you are taking a variable and you, transfer, you are tra transforming this variable into something new, right? By calling a variable variable. Now you probably also uh, understood what I uh, meant when I laid out with a variable variable creates a variable with the same name as the variable's value. 
a variable with the same name as the variable value. Since this is an array, this name, this new variable is getting assigned the value variable temp. And as you, rem as you can see above here, it contains the value itself, right? And now I see, you think? Oh. Yeah, I put it a bit wrong, so I'm calling SS key. So, I have the variable arriving name, right? I'm calling a very vari variable variable on key. That means it will form a variable called name because that was the value of key. And if I store at the same time the variable temp in it, holding the value here, I'm getting, for instance, name is Batman here through this expression. That means each time the for each loop is running for any key, it will expect the array and then create a set of temporary variables here. Luis is asking, so why just creating it if it just reads the same value? Well, we get to this later on. We get to this later on. Good. Um, so let me add a comment here. Creates a variable. Variable. The same name as the variables. And here we are going to assign the value above. Oh, the result in the example. If no, no, I erased my example. Sorry. Uh, the result. It would contain, if I submit Batman as a name, this would create a temporary variable called name. And at the same time, it would assign the value Batman, you're right, and trimmed. So that means, um, Running or looping through the arrays means that each time I loop through the array, now really um, it is not only checking, is the key missing or is it expected, and then create here a, a set of variables called name is Batman, email something, and comment something, right? Um, we can also use this here on the missing array, right? Later, for um, we need this for rendering the user messages. So if it's the missing in the required array, we will also output an empty string using a variable variable. So that would again trace the name like if the name was not submitted, right? An empty string. So here the result would be name nothing. 
but then at least this variable is set and later well that is that is now the um, the important thing for you to remember in uh, for uh, the future of this script if we got name for instance as an empty string then name is set as a variable and we can use it later on in our user output say please um, uh, well we can check is name existing and is it empty and then we can build a user feedback or we can in our user feedback then really output the um, variables the variable names content here and then we are reaching already the end of the for loop here Good. Well, I think it's 14 o'clock and well, you did already a lot of work. I would suggest um, we stop here. There are no more assignments because we need to work on this script here uh, tomorrow. It's for storing purposes. Yes, it is for storing purposes, but um, also for um, kind of adequate storing, right? So I'm getting the Array's name and the values out of here and I assigned it in well I made two different scenarios right I could assign it to the required array or I could assign it to the expected array that's why we're doing it and those set of variables which is created here right lives as long as the script is um, active so they are accessible then from any way from anywhere. So it's for storing purposes. Yes, you could say so. I would say we, um, we reached an end for today's lesson. Thank you very much. It was actually a pleasure to work with you online. Uh, my mouth is uh, pretty dry <laughs> right now and my head is um, not exactly exploding but um, it's also hard work to uh, to um, talk all the time right so we will continue and finish this script tomorrow in the lessons from 12 30 to and, um, yeah i hope that was fun or at least a new learning experience saved us from the late afternoon lessons the um, my vision for this week is that we are concluding this uh, complicated script tomorrow we have about two and a half hours so that would be fine i think to finish it to upload it and to test it 